What's up, everybody? Once again, this is the Sucker Punks Sacramento Acoustic Podcast. Today, we have Jesus Christ Mister. Hi, you guys. everybody. Hello. You guys, go ahead and introduce yourselves from uh, left to right. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having us. I'm Morgan Giles. I play guitar and do a little bit of singing. Hi, I'm Jade. I do vocals. I'm Chris, and I play bass, as you can see. <laughs> so, uh, tell us a little bit about your guys' name. Where did you, uh, you guys come up with that? Well, we kind of took um, everybody that was in the band, we kind of took our initial and decided to just kind of made something up. And I think Morgan had uh, actually came up with the name Jesus Christ Mister, and uh, it was just too good to pass up. Right. So. I just noticed that there was Jay, Chris, Morgan, and Ramon. Ramon is uh, Ramon Puente, who also plays uh, guitar in Urban Wolves and Visiting Days. Yeah. And Ramon really helped us out by uh, playing drums on the recording. And yeah, those four initials all put JCMR together, and we thought that'd be a really catchy band name. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Mister. Yeah. When I when I hear the name, I think of uh, the way you say it. Jesus Christ, Mister. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly how it should be said. That's exactly how it should be said. I like that. I like that a lot. I've offended some people, you know, by saying it, and they thought I was insulting them. But no, it's just a band name. Explanation points the very important part of it. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> nice. Uh, how did you guys form as a band? Well, um, I Morgan actually approached me and asked if uh, you know I could sing, uh, and I can't. So it turns out, um, somewhat. So uh, you know, we just kind of got together, and he had a lot more connections, and it's uh, pretty much how it came up for me. So he just asked me and my friend Ramon if we were interested in helping him with a recording project and in turning into a full band kind of deal. Cool. That's awesome. And there's um, one more uh, in your guys' band. Right, the drummer? There is. Uh, we've been uh, in between some drummers recently. We played our first show a few weeks ago uh, with Kaler, who's uh, the drummer of the Aber Zombies, who uh, Chris is uh, a bass player and singer of. And Kaler helped us out uh, big time with our show. But I've uh, been talking to another guy and look forward to practicing with the first time tomorrow night, actually. So hopefully uh, there are going to be some shows here coming up soon. In fact, there is one. March 30th is uh, going to be the uh, CD release show. Where at? It's going to be uh, probably at the Colony. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very cool place, especially since it's been taken over. <laughs> and all these songs, uh, you know, going back to how the band was started, all these songs uh, were written uh, right around the time of Memorial Day 2011 when the secretions uh, did their 20th anniversary suck fest. Nice. Uh, they asked me to be a, a part of that because I'm a former member of uh, Secretions. I was very fortunate to play with Mickey and Dan uh, uh, back in 1997 uh, to 2000. And uh, that really inspired me. I had taken a couple of years off. I'd gotten away from playing music for a couple of years. Yeah. And playing with them again really inspired me to start writing music again. And uh, Asked some people to uh, help me out. Jade here uh, turned me on to Bikini Kill and the Red Ants and uh, told me that she could sing like them. And I thought that would be really great to sing with someone who can do that. And it's worked out wonderfully. Yeah, nice. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you, uh, what made you start playing music? I started playing music uh, when I was uh, in high school. I started playing guitar when I was about 15 years old, and like a lot of people, I listened to Ramones uh, early in my life and caught on to you know the simplicity but uh, seriousness at the same time of uh, their style of music and their dedication to it and playing as hard and fast as they do, and uh, they really turned me on to it and. I uh, started to get involved uh, right out of high school uh, in Midtown and downtown Sacramento and there was a big scene going on in the mid-90s uh, connected to a place called The Loft mm -hmm. uh, which really opened my eyes up uh, to what uh, music, live music could be. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of great people here in Sacramento, uh, not just bands I listen to, but a lot of great people at a place called the Hindenburg, uh, Time Tested Books, which is still there on Twenty First Street, mm -hmm. and uh, the Loft. All three of those were connected, and uh, some wonderful things were happening there almost twenty years ago. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, how about you? 
Um, well, uh, actually, I used to sing a lot. I uh, was actually raised in church, so that's where I got like my singing background. But I uh, quickly, you know, got out of that and uh, fell into the punk scene probably when I was about 12. A friend of mine turned me into that, and I played trumpet for a while. Um, I was a drummer. Um, tried playing guitar, suck at it. So <laughs> I figured singing that's where I can kind of just be myself. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, you said you said you started when you were how old? When you were 12? Uh, when I was 12 is really when I got into like the punk scene and I picked up drums. Um, but I was singing since I was like three. Oh wow. So. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. Were you trained? Taking classes and stuff? Um, I have had vocal coaches, yes. Um, I don't currently have one. Um, you don't need one after so long. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. You understand now. You can understand how it is and how much to move your voice. Yes, yeah. exactly. exactly. And how about you? Uh, when I was in middle school, there was this woodshop program at the middle school I went to, and um, you could build electric guitars there. Oh, wow. So I really got involved in doing that. And, uh, yeah. So I built my first guitar there. That's the coolest woodshop class I've ever heard. They're, they're actually yeah, really <laughs> cool because they're really taking off right now. It's woodshop rocks. Yeah. So you can check them out. It was like kind of helping out like little kids get into music. So I think yeah. it was pretty cool. That's so cool. I didn't really get into music that much. And I started to have like uh, nothing much to do. So I started picking up the guitar and playing it more. And then uh, I think my first show I went to Casa and saw the secretions. And I want to say the final summation. Probably. So it was, a couple, it was a couple of years ago. So yeah. then I was like, wow, this is really fucking cool because that was like my first underground show I've been to. Yeah. So I was like, it's kind of what I want to do. Nice. Nice. Okay. I think it's a lot of fun. The first show I ever played with a band called the Toss Off. So it was at uh, the Peace Street House, which is Cross of the Chaos now. And it's amazing just all the years of history in that building. Yeah. Oh, I can only imagine. Um, what was your guys' first performance like as this band? It was scary for me at first. It was my first performance like as a singer ever. Um, pretty much, I never played in an actual band. Mm -hmm. um, so we were just kind of like, you know, in people's, you know, living rooms, things like that. So it was scary at first, but um, I really enjoyed it and I can't wait for more. Yeah, it's always exhilarating. How about the rest of you guys? What about uh, your individual first experience on stage? Well, my first, uh, my first experience was, like I just said, uh, at uh, Peace Street House, Casa de Chaos, and I always remember uh, playing in front of a very small audience in a room not much bigger than this one we're in right now, <laughs> and, you know, just people packed in really tight, and, <clears throat> you know, I think that's probably the best experience you can have as a musician, to start you off and just the togetherness and the unity of all of it and how we can all come together and experience that same uh, feeling together. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. How about your uh, your first experience? Uh, my first experience playing a show was, uh, he mentioned that I played in the Abra Zombies, so that was my first band I was ever in, so it was the first band we ever played a show with. But when we started the band, we didn't really actually know how to play music, so we just were like, yeah, we're in a band. Fake it to you, make it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So our, our first show was kind of weird. It was really fun, but we knew like three and a half songs, you know, and uh, we used to have this uh, barber in downtown Roseville named Holby. He's yeah. like this uh, big, like, rockabilly kind of dude, and it's actually right out this up like bass drum. So he used to have in the shop, and there's like a bunch of hot rods in there, so uh, our drummer used to live in the loft next door to the shop, and uh, he asked him one day, hey, you're in a band, right? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, you want to play a show? We're having like this car show, barbecue kind of thing. He's like, yeah, that sounds really cool. And he's like, yeah, I need you guys to play like about an hour. Like, yeah, yeah, we could do that, no problem. We'd be like three and a half songs, so we just dragged them out as long as we could. And kept repeating them, and we didn't have a singer at the time. So we just like, yeah, we didn't know how to stay in tune or in time. But that was our first show. That was really cool. cool. That's really cool. So, all right, so um, you guys uh, prepared uh, a, a song. For us. Mm -hmm. What do you guys got? What's it called? We're going to play a song called uh, Bike Nazi Hunters. This is a song dedicated to a lot of people uh, in the areas that we live. Uh, I live Chris and I both uh, live out in Roseville, and we see a lot of uh, packs of uh, roving bicyclists, people that just take themselves way too seriously yeah. on their bikes. And, <laughs> and, uh, this is a song about them. There it goes. Alright, alright. One, two, three, four.
Institute of California, Sacramento. I teach uh, in the humanities department and uh, general education, a lot of literature and uh, critical theory and all kinds of fun stuff. Film theory, film history, a lot of great stuff to teach there. Nice, nice. You're a very intelligent man. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I'm very lucky though, to have the job I have. True, true. But I mean, you've got a lot of knowledge in the field. Oh, thanks. Uh, do you, does it relate to your music in any way, your your work? Does it relate to can, my music? Or, or can yeah. you relate it to your oh, music? Oh, definitely, yeah. Teaching and uh, performing, uh, teaching and singing, teaching and playing any instrument, dancing, you know, is uh, definitely connected. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, there's a big performance aspect to any teacher, uh, any teaching job. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like to talk a little punk, you know, when I can, and, uh, introduce our uh, students to that kind of thing, because a lot of them, sadly, you know, have no idea what I'm talking about when I mention the Ramones or the Sex Pistols, right. so, you know, it's an important cultural movement that young people should know, I feel. Yes. These kids should know this. They really should. <laughs> I heard a kid just the other day when I was at Starbucks ask his mom who Hercules was. Broke my heart. <laughs> well, he didn't even know the Disney movie version. And, uh, <laughs> and his, parents, his parents couldn't even explain to him correctly who he was. <laughs> that was even more sad. <laughs> that is sad. Yes. Uh, how about you? Um, um, well, I am a student. I do game design. Um, I was employed, not anymore. So sadly, they moved my job to another state, and uh, you know, I don't have a home. So. But you're you are in school. Does uh, mm -hmm. well, uh, does anything you do in school, or maybe even your job before, does it had it ever pertained to the way you write music? Um, I would say that I think anything that you do in life can can be inspiration. It's really just a matter of taking it yeah. and utilizing it. Um, I think for me, um, whenever I do any type of writing, creative writing, you know, short stories, anything like that, um, if you take it from who you are, I think it comes out better. Which is normally where I have the problem, so yeah. <laughs> it's a hard business. <laughs> Definitely. How about yourself? I work at the Gallery Mall. Awesome. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's a it's a wonderful place to be. Can you write ba bass riffs to uh, to people as they walk by? Yeah, this is like. <laughs> 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 they like fall around slightly overweight people. Can you play the fat guy line? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm sorry if you guys already told me this, but are you guys originally from Sacramento? All of you? Uh, two of us are. I'm not. I'm from Texas. You're from Texas. So I would say I'm from Houston because I was born in Galveston, um, raised in Angleton, Texas. So it's like right outside of Houston. Nice. How long? Uh, how long have you been here? Uh, almost seven years now. Oh, cool. So this year will make seven years. How much do you like it compared to out there? Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's interesting. It was a big culture shock. Yeah. Um, I'd seen, you know, 
know, big city, things like that, uh, different types of people. But I am originally from a small town, so it was a bit of a culture shock. Oh, yeah. But um, I'm adjusting to it slowly but surely. So <laughs> still not have all the way. But <laughs> nice. And you guys you guys both grew up here in Sacramento? Mm hmm I'm from Roseville. And you're from Roseville? Mm -hmm. Where would you go to school? I went to uh, Oakmont High, which is in Roseville. I've lived in Sacramento or Roseville most of my life. Nice. And I'm assuming you went to Roseville. Yeah, I went to Roseville High. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right, uh, what do you guys enjoy about the music scene here? That's a good question. Uh, the number, the sheer uh, number of really, truly talented uh, people that are in the Sacramento Valley, you know, beyond the city of Sacramento, obviously. Uh, this has an incredibly supportive community uh, of each other, of people that are doing some very different things. There are scenes within scenes. There are all kinds of different scenes around Sacramento. Yeah, there are. All kinds of supportive people, including everyone at Sucker Punch, obvious uh, Sucker Punks, excuse me. Uh, thank you very much, okay. uh, <laughs> Sucker Punks, for everything you guys do, and guys like Ken Deuce. Uh, Chris brought up to me earlier this evening that you guys are doing, you know, a similar to what Ken has been doing for a long time, and it's really amazing just how many people there are that you know has supported all the bands that've been around yeah. all these years. Yeah, this, yeah the, the scene is, it's very big here in Sacramento. And, and it's, it's, there's so many people here in Sacramento who still don't realize that. Uh, and because there, there are so many, so many sub-genres, you know, uh, that we actually acquire here. Because we, uh, we have our punk rock, we have our rockability. We have, uh, um, what I believe is a derivative of punk rock is a, like a style called Scrams music. Very, very different, very different uh, style of music, but uh, it still has the very, very same feeling as punk rock, as what they were doing when they first started out. Uh, and there's many, many people don't even know what the word scrams is. <laughs> I'm admitting this is my first time hearing it as well. Yeah, it is a, it is a very, very um, small style of music. Actually, it's not even that small. It's bigger than, than you would think, but the fact that nobody knows it just makes it seem like it's so small. And we have one right here wherever we get a hometown in Sacramento. As well as, you know, like the, the hardcore bands, we have many metal bands and what I call bro rock bands. And <laughs> <laughs> and country bands and R&B and hip hop. We actually have country music out here. Oh, oh, there's a huge hip hop scene. Yes. 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 <laughs> there's huge, huge, just incredibly talented uh, musicians in this town. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that, you know, I've been very fortunate to, uh, to play with for a long time now that, you know, are just wanting to do it for fun and, you know, do it as a creative uh, output yeah. and, you know, are not trying to be the next big thing and not uh, trying to, you know, make a living off of it. I mean, that's just great to make people can do that, yeah. but, yeah, it's such, you know, great artistic thing to do as well. Yeah. What about you, Jade? What's your answer to that question as someone um, who's new to Sacramento music? <laughs> I was really shocked um, because when I first came to California, I thought Californians were very rude. Um, that they were just, you know, in their own little bubble, their own little world. Well, you're not but, too far off. Yes, but, you know, when I was introduced to the Sacramento scene, I was just floored by, you know, the camaraderie. Um, people really do help others out. You need, you know, your drummer's sick or your bassist is sick. People will come and, you know, help, help you out. out. And I think that's really important because um, I think the more we help each other out, the better the person you know, we can be. Yeah. So, um, you know, and it's just mixing two different styles and different play, you know, different personalities and things like that. Yeah, yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, it's always awesome when uh, you have a, a great group of musicians. You are, you're all in like 13 different bands, but you're all friends. So when like mm -hmm. you lose a guitarist because he had to do something important or something like that, you've got another friend who's like, yeah, I'll do that. I'm in three bands, but four, <laughs> four. it's a big deal. Four, this is your how about you? Uh, I'm just really like it because it seems like you know everyone takes care of everyone for the most part, you know. So I think it's really cool. There's always something to do, you know. There's yeah. Not a weekend where there's not nothing. That yeah, it's very true. There's yeah. never a weekend where nothing is going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are people working very hard right now on making sure that happens. Every Friday, Saturday, 
Sunday, <laughs> Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Those middle of the week shows are sometimes awesome. Can't lie. Yeah. When I was when I was still employed, uh, every once in a while we'd go to the press club or something like that in the middle of the week. And I didn't want to be there, but once I started drinking and enjoying the music, it was like ah, hangover, fuck it. <laughs> 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 this is a great time. Alright, so um, I believe you guys have a second song ready for us to play. Alright. Yeah. So we'll play for you guys uh, Put Your Fucking Crying. Let's do, uh, how about this? Can we do uh, Straight Edge into uh, that one since they're both such short songs? Yeah, that would yeah. work out. We're going to play two in a row that are both really short songs. Not a problem. And this first song is called Straight Edge. It's not the lifestyle for me. Uh, which was a song that I uh, wrote quite a few years ago when I was playing in the Secretions and I uh, got to play with them quite a few times and unfortunately it was never recorded so it was a real dream of mine to finally get the song on uh, disc which we were able to do this last summer. So. Awesome, I'm excited to hear it. <laughs> Alright, right? <coughs> when I grew up, I had grew up, I knew what I wanted to be. Just great friends with. 
Well, I think uh, many of us uh, in this room and many of us in Sacramento in general certainly come from the uh, secretions tree, and I really, really am uh, honored to have been a part of uh, that band for a couple of years. And they have such an amazing history in this city and have influenced just hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of uh, yes. people to start their own band and write their own song and paint their own painting and write their own book and do everything, you know, which uh, is what punk rock is all supposed to be about, do it yourself. So right. I think that Mickey and Dan and Paul and Kevin and Julie and Molly and Raisin and Tom and all of the uh, former members and current members, you know, uh, a really big part of uh, the, sa uh, the Sacramento scene. Yes, absolutely. So there's secretions. Anybody else? I mean, I personally, I really love the Dead Dads. Um, I will try to go out to any show that I see when they sit on. Um, Mad Judy as well. Yes. Uh, they just got great energy, mm -hmm. and I, I really like it. I mean, there's a lot of others, but I mean, just those two in particular, I'll make sure I'll go. Absolutely, so. yes. Those are two very great bands. We, uh, we, we filmed them at the Punch and Pie Fest. Uh, did we ever finish a video for Mad Judy yet? Not yet. It's coming up uh, probably sometime in the next month or so. But we did do the Dead Dads video, and that one actually came out. I don't know if you guys saw our video that we did for them. Did I you? haven't seen that one yet, no. Benjamin actually did that one, I believe, and it came out very well. I, I liked it. Yes, thank you for that. Check it out on YouTube. I like the uh, interview you just put up with uh, Corey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, uh, it was uh, the first time back in a while, so there was uh, some awkward silences. We were both kind of nervous. <laughs> he was sweating, and, and I believe I was stoned or something. <laughs> so how about you? What bands you know, could you name drop? Which ones uh, influenced you? Definitely starting when we started playing a lot of the shows in Sacramento, I definitely say the Scoundrels. Scoundrels, those yes. are really cool guys. Definitely helped us out a lot in uh, Machine City. Mm -hmm. and those guys are really cool too. Nice. Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, I met the Scoundrels uh, probably four years ago um, when I was still in the this metalcore band. It's what some seek to forgive this used to be called Iridescent. We played with them. We're a metalcore band. We played with a bunch of punk bands at the Fire Escape, and they were one of them. So yeah, they used that was to the first time we got to meet them. house band for that. Place. Yeah, yeah. Dante, we say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were cool guys, and we also, I believe, we saw them at um, Bandcamp. They were at. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew what Bandcamp was. V103 put together that whole, uh, basically, um, two-day camping uh, with music, like a little miniature festival. It was very cool, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other, any other name dropping? <laughs> Anything else? Um, just promote all our friends' bands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we just shamelessly plug them all. <laughs> yeah. Very, very fortunate to uh, have played with a lot of great people in this town. And uh, Jesus Christ, Mister is uh, just mm -hmm. you know is uh, the newest uh, incarnation of really wonderful people I've been fortunate to play with. Jesus Christ, Mister. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Brad and Chris Teichman. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, know the Teichman brothers. Uh, they're a couple guys that have uh, been in a couple of uh, really cool bands here in Sacramento. Uh, I've had the fortune uh, to play with uh, back about ten years ago. Uh, we were in a band called the uh, King Robot and then the Naked Robbers. And the Naked Robbers also uh, was uh, featured um, a guy named Noah Nelson, who uh, is sucker punk, you should definitely uh, check out Noah Nelson sometime. And he's a fascinating uh, individual uh, to interview. He would be great, I think, for uh, your interviews. Um, I, send him our way. I will definitely uh, uh, give him that hint uh, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually um, we're actually supposed to have Danny Secretion coming in here in uh, the next few weeks as well. Wonderful. So that's we're excited about that. He's that's a storyteller. <laughs> I know. I know. Story that's teller. what uh, I know. He's got his own uh, podcast and everything like that. So I'm I'm already prepared to be like only thirty minutes, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Good right. luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, was there ever a time when you envisioned yourself doing something completely different other than being in the bands, being a musician? 
I think that, uh, you know, it's definitely been a big part of my life since about high school when I first picked up the guitar. Uh, you know, I took a couple of years off uh, when our daughter, uh, my wife Heather and I, uh, had a little girl uh, named Lily about six, a little over six years ago. And I had to take a break. I was playing in a van, uh, band at the time uh, uh, called Va Va Voom, and that band, uh, sadly, uh, went the way of many bands and just kind of uh, dissipated. But, uh, you know, for the first couple of years there, I was really focused on, you know, uh, being with my family and uh, had to kind of take a break from it. But I'm very fortunate that uh, my wife has been as supportive as she has and uh, encouraging me to get going again and uh, doing it again. So. I think this is something I would I definitely see myself doing for most of my life, if not all, I hope. Yeah, 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 why not? And you got, you got, you know, cover bands covering, like, Leonard Skinner, and they're all, like, 60 years old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Still doing what they love. Excuse <coughs> me. Um, how about you? Um, I, I have to say that I could never envision myself not doing this. Really? Um, yeah, definitely. It, it's always been something I've wanted to do, I just never came forth, um, mm -hmm. so now that it has, um, I totally love it. Was, it, well, was, there ever, was there ever a point in time where you didn't think it was, you know, it was going to happen the way you wanted it to? Um, I know I've been through that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think all through, like, middle school and high school, I had a group of girls, um, and we tried to get, like, you know, a punk band together. It just never happened. Um, you know, we kind of got together, banged on some stuff, you know, for a little bit, <laughs> and it never came forth, so I think probably about, you know, 20 years or so, I was like, well, I guess this is never going to happen, but it would have been nice. And right. then, you know, I was approached, and I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm totally going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, that's really cool. How about yourself? Uh, I don't think there's really anything that I really want to do, mm -hmm. other than play, other than playing music. <laughs> anything else I do besides this probably will have music involved, one sort of the other. So. Right, yeah, absolutely. Tell, I, um, tell them your ultimate goal. And, oh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to start a business later, like building guitars and repairing guitars. So that's oh, nice. With, uh, with your knowledge of woodworking, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a school in Michigan. I'm going to try to go for it's uh, six months to the program and I can come back and build them. That would be yeah. awesome. If you uh, if you ever start that business, I want a custom made guitar. All right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we'll crash around and break enough stuff, we better learn how to fix it. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I've seen a neck recently. Uh, he's working on. He knows what he's doing. He sure does. Mm -hmm. That's it's really cool. I'd like to see some of the work you do. Written to like a lot of anime, so I'm trying to build the bass from Fully Cooly right now. <laughs> yeah, That's pretty good. Too. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. All right. Um, what do you guys think about the way the internet is changing music right now? Mm. Be honest, please. I like that it's more accessible, but at the same time, when you know, when I was younger, you got you know a tape of a band, you know, that was recorded on someone's portable tape recorder. You know, you're not supposed to have it. I mean, that's the greatest feeling in the world that you know you had something that you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. So now everything is kind of you know free. Everybody can just have access to it. It's great because it gets out there, but at the same time, um, you know, it's it's all of it's out there. Everybody has access to it. So yeah. It's not special anymore. Yeah, yeah, which is, uh, I guess, uh, the fact that people have so much easy, easy access to uh, all music, yeah, like you said, kind of makes it not, uh, it, it, it doesn't stand out as much anymore, or people aren't as interested to come out to shows and stuff like that. That's one of the things that I've, I've noticed, you know, people don't come to shows as much anymore because they have all the music they can, you know, ever listen to right there on the internet. There, that, and you know, uh, you know, bands who are actually, you know, honest bands who are actually putting a lot of work into trying to make it, you know, are not making. They're never going to make any money. They're, they're, in, they're, in, they end up spending so much more of their own money to, to slowly get nowhere. You know, and it's, and it's sad. It's not cheap. It's sad. It's not cheap at all. That's <laughs> what I think about the internet. It's taking away from the talent of people. Yeah, it's, it is. I think it's kind of a give take thing. See, I mean, I, most of the bands I listen to now, I probably would have never heard of if it wasn't for the internet. So That's I'm grateful for that, but also I feel like it, it kind of ruined the radio. I mean, the radio is always coming out in there, but I feel like because people can listen to music on the internet, it's so easy and accessible mm -hmm. now that 
everyone's into like different things. Like if I ask you what kind of music you like, or if I ask him what kind of music you like, it'd probably be very, very specific with bands and genres. So right. like if you want to be on the radio, you have to be like so bland and generic that it's like yeah. easy to spoon feed it to everybody. But I mean, I think also since everyone listens to all their different types of music that's really accessible on the internet, there's so many different genres now. Mm -hmm. There's like a genre, like subculture of a subculture of a yes. subculture. It's yes. like you can come up to someone and be like, Hey man, you're a really good rock man. Like, we are a melodic school. Hardcore, <laughs> folk punk, how dare you say that to me? I've heard, uh, I've heard Triforce Core, Triforce oh. Core, Nintendo Core. Uh, no, like, no, one, no one's just really just a band anymore. They're very precise of what they are and yeah. stick to it. So. I guess, well, I guess that, that goes along with uh, people just trying to change, you know, the sound of music so, it, so it's not so radio. You know, everything on the radio, like you said, is just very, just, just plain and, you know, bland. Uh, and all these, you know, music, all this music that you can find on, on the internet and stuff like that, it's very, uh, very different, um, obscure, if you will. You know, but I believe that those bands, I actually respect some of, a lot of those bands because they are, they are playing something that absolutely no one is playing. Yeah. And it's, it really does, I think I agree with both of them about, you know, it brings it to people that may not have ever heard it before and not have ever had the opportunity to hear it. So it's definitely a positive force in that way. Collaborations as well. Yeah. So you see a lot of different types of genres like, you know, rock and rap, you know, they get together. Um, you know, I have a friend, she does a lot of piano music and um, she puts it out there and, uh, yeah. People that spin and DJs and they'll yeah. mix up the music. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that that way. Is, that's really cool. Yes. Yeah. So if you're doing it for the collaboration and just for the art of it, I think it's good. I definitely agree with that. Yes. And this is what you know. The history of punk rock is all about: is people doing it themselves, and you know, right now they're probably more people than ever, you know, recording and sharing their music mm -hmm. than there ever have been in the history of the world. And sure, it's pretty sure. impressive. This Seems is like, like a yeah, definitely. Yeah. Alright, well, uh, you guys have uh, one more song to play for us? Sure. Yeah. We'll play a song called uh, Baby on Board, which is a play on, of course, the Baby on Board song, uh, signs. <laughs> Inspired by one of the best Simpsons jokes of all time, in my opinion. <laughs> when uh, in a flashback episode, Marge is holding out the Baby on Board signs. Yeah. And says, Look! Anybody remember? Uh, I've seen a lot, but um, not fresh in my head, no. <laughs> now people will stop uh, intentionally ramming our car. <laughs>
Christ Mister, everybody. And thank you all for coming out. Thank you very much, Jason. Thank you so much, Matt. All right, sucker thank you. pumps. Thank you. Yeah, sucker pumps.